Hello and welcome. My name is Doug Fink and I'm a PowerShell MVP and I want to do some test driven development with PowerShell. I'm going to build a function called get largest number in array and I'm going to pass an array of numbers to it and then pull out the largest number in there and return that. So the way I like to get started when I'm kind of testing out a new function to see if it makes sense or see how far I want to take it, I'll build my test right in next to my code right next to my function I'll do some iterations with it in fact if I think that the function has some legs to it and it starts to take shape I'll then pull out the test and put it in its own file and I'll name it whatever dot tests dot ps1 I'll pull out the function and I'll put that in a ps1 file or in a module once I'm happy with everything otherwise I kind of just use this as a scratch area so what I do initially is in the same file that I would be creating my function, I'll create a describe. I'll use some uh, pester blocks, uh, and we'll set up a describe, and we'll grab this right here, and inside it, I'll create my first it, and I usually do a sanity check at this point, and that sanity check looks like this. Uh, should be true and I'll just do a simple dollar true should be dollar true and I'll run this and I can see that pester is installed it's giving me some of the correct results I can double check my sanity that's what I expect and this way I know at least I have some of the basics set up but I'm not uh, fumbling through figuring out why is it my why are my tests beginning to run so one of the ideas is you do you start a test and you do what they call red green testing you write a test that you know is going to fail and it's a simple test and then you write the code that'll make it turn green and pass so I know I'm going to be passing an array to my function and I know that the first time the array I'm going to send I want to get the result three back so we'll just say should be three and then I'll create a variable called actual and we'll name the function is get largest number and let's pass in two comma three comma one now when I run this I get exactly the failure I want the term get largest number is not recognized and I can get this to turn green by creating a function now like this and run it and now I'm green now one of the reasons why you do these red green tests is you begin to build the smallest amount of code both in your test and in your function and you get the sense of uh, achieving success with the test that you're writing so the next piece that I want to do is I want to compare and say that the actual should be three now when I run this this should fail because right, I get a null because that's what the function is returning and I can quickly go to green by just returning a 3 and I'm back to a green state my tests are working next up I want to um, grab some parameters and I'll just call this list we'll run this again it fails and a quick way to get to a uh, back to the green state is I can actually take list and I can pipe it to the built-in measure object All right that should grab the maximum now when I run this I still get a failure and what does it tell me it expected a 3 but it got a Microsoft PowerShell commands generic uh, dot measure info and the reason that is is that this returns several uh, properties on, on and off from the object and I just want to get grab the maximum so now we should go back to green cool let's create another test and we're going to leave the measure object for the moment and then we're going to go create our own internal algorithm so the next thing I want to do is create another test and we'll grab um, uh, we'll say it should be five and let's do uh, five two and four and we run this 
and our, our tests are now are continuing to pass. So since we're not changing the algorithm, we should be green at, the, at this point. Another test I want to do is let's pass in an array of a million uh, items in the array. Okay, and we'll create that array here. We'll do from zero to a million, I guess, and it should be that. So now we'll run this, and you can see that last test is taking a bit of time. It takes about three seconds for measure object to uh, figure out the maximum in, in a, out of an array of a million. Okay, that's fine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to comment out this last one because I don't want to spend three seconds every time I run my tests to see if things pass. Let's go back up and start building out our own approach to pulling out the largest number. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called max, which will hold the maximum value of the array. And I'll initially seed that with the number zero. Next, I'll uh, do a for each or a for loop. And we'll do it from one. And then we'll do it to the list.count, the number of items in the list. And we will compare the current item. So we'll take the list. The current item is dollar list subscript i. Let's compare it. If that's greater than the max, we will swap those variables. We'll set max equal to that item. Now, once we go through all this, we'll return max after we go we loop through all the items in the array. Let's run this and see if our tests still run. So out of the box, we see that our first test passed, no problem, our algorithm works. But we see that in the second test, it expected to get a 5, but it got a 2. So why is that? Well, first up, I know why, but because we're starting at subscript 1 in the for loop, we need to start at subscript 0, right? That's the way uh, arrays work in, in PowerShell. They're zero-based arrays. So I'm going to change that to 0, and now we're back to running tests. So both of our tests pass. Let's do uh, another test. Let's grab the numbers. Let's see if we can find a number 7. And let's do 6, 1, and 7. And in here, we'll just we'll throw another number five. We'll put four elements in the array, and we this should be a seven. Let's run this, and this time it got the number six is the largest, not the number seven. Let's go back to our algorithm. We're off by one again because I subtracted one from the count. Okay, let's run this. Now all of our tests pass. So if you notice, we've only written a few lines of PowerShell, and I've already introduced two errors in, in this simple algorithm. And we found that by setting a different set of uh, uh, items inside the array. We put the largest numbers at the beginning and at the end. Uh, those are our boundary conditions. And we fleshed out a couple of bugs. So let's uh, do another one. And this time I'm going to look for the negative, uh, the result of negative 1. So we can put, let's do just negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Let's run our run it, and we get another error. And this time we're saying string lengths are different. One, both lengths are two, but the string differs at index one. Hmm, well, why is it comparing strings? Interesting. Well, that's PowerShell. It's it's dynamic. It figures out things based on objects, and it takes a minus sign as a string. So let's cast our list as an array of integers. Let's see what I, if that helps. Okay, that looks a little better. It expected a negative 1, but it got a 0. So we're not comparing strings. We're comparing numbers, but we still have yet another error. And the reason it gets 0, even though it's not in our array of numbers that we pass in, it's because my max value is set at 0. So the comparison of max to the current item in the list is never going to do the right thing because 0 is always greater than negative numbers. So let's pick a different seed value. And let's pick a minimal. Let's run that. And all of our tests now succeed. 
So again, within a few lines of code, we had uh, off by one errors, typical with array processing. We had, you know, we started at one, we should have started at zero. We went to count minus one, we should have just gone to count. Then we saw another issue that because PowerShell wants to compare objects, it ha handles the uh, minus one as a string instead of an integer. And then the last problem we had was our max was set too high. So now let's throw in our last test, a very large array, and let's see how our for loop handles it. Remember the last one we're using measure object took three seconds, but with ours, it's sub-second response time. So we solved a whole bunch of different things. We figured out our boundary conditions for upper and lower on our array. We figured out that we should be handling integers, not objects. And we actual, actually uh, introduced a performance improvement. So that's what I wanted to demo. I hope you found it interesting. Again, my name is Doug Fink. You can find me on Twitter at D-F-I-N-K-E. You can also find my GitHub repos there. And if you hop over to the PowerShell gallery, you can find a bunch of different kinds of uh, PowerShell modules that I've made open source. And you can check those out as well. So thanks for joining.